Good afternoon. How is everybody today? Sorry, let me see. You're looking at that one down there that says like 10 seconds to go. <laughs> I saw something really interesting in the chat. <laughs> all right. How is everyone today? Good. I'm glad you're all okay. Just let me know whether you can hear me and also can you hear... Can you hear me? The am I still on mute? No. Yes. So you should be able to hear us. Just let us know how we are doing. Give us a... A thumbs up if you can hear us. That'd be absolutely fantastic if you can. Good afternoon. The weather in the sunny Wales is getting a little bit brighter. The sun is out, but it is still bitter. Hence Very reason, cold. Hence the reason why I've got my... What's, the, what's, the, what's this thing called? Oh, we haven't got super sauce on. Where's my super sauce gone? We're all black. Oh. oh what's happened here, Louise? Oh, oh, I don't know what's happened, but we're black today. Black on the screen. We don't have the oh. uh, super sauce down. Why is that, Louise? Why haven't we got the super sauce on? Uh, oh, that could be me. Sorry, I'm a bit preoccupied with my microphone in a minute. Uh, oh, is that there? Yeah, I think you That's... think that may have really sparked it even more than I could. Why do that <laughs> now? I'm like that now. Look, I'm like that. <laughs> Can't you like just that. poke your head in the top <laughs> corner? No, this no way. the other way. That's <laughs> it. And do what you're doing in the bottom like this. Do it like that. Oh, this way. Yeah. It's like those, um, those um, magic tricks, isn't it, where they slide the boxes and I, my head, my head's off. And put your legs in the other yeah. side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Luigi Bear, just put that back, to be honest. Kind of. Oh, oh, I thought it was rather fun, <laughs> but okay. That's not going to work, is oh, it? the boss. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't quite know liked why it. Um, Super Source <laughs> isn't on. Is it MP1 for Super Source? I don't know. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, no, we won't bother. Well, <coughs> bother with that. So is everyone. So, uh, can everyone hear us? I haven't even looked. Uh, can everyone hear? I don't know. But oh, Susan became a member yesterday. Yay, welcome. Well done, Susan. Thank you very Fabulous. much. Do appreciate that. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm going to have an info for me for that. I'm absolutely parched. Mm. Anybody oh. is welcome on the Q&A. Members, non-members. Oh, yes. Everybody. Mm. I just wanted to put that out there because some people, somebody messaged me, Tanya messaged me a little while ago, a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and she was talking to somebody in a class who mentioned up the bench, which mm. is amazing. And mm is great isn't it yeah. um but this person thought it was just for members well, I'm right. okay and yeah. tanya was like no 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 it's for everybody yeah, yeah. It, it is yes we're all inclusive <coughs> yeah yes all inclusive yeah <laughs> hey, let's get on it <laughs> so we are we are <coughs> q a all inclusive everybody's welcome <laughs> yeah. except the bots except the bots except yeah the bots Naughty bots. I'm trusting John will look after them. I don't, I don't know if he's here. Are oh, you here, Mod? So he's most probably, probably busy working. For Lurking change, in the background, he? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. All right, good. How is everyone today? Uh, any news this week, Louise? I don't think so. Oh, I'm just racking my head. It's been, I've just been catching up with my vintage range because yes. we didn't do much with it at all throughout December. The no, shop was Christmas, busy. Christmas. So I had a little bit of a backlog and I've had some nice bits and pieces in. So, yeah, I've been doing that today. Good, mm -hmm. good. And we also uh, released another podcast yeah. today as well. <laughs> and we recorded another one last night, but that's to come in a few weeks' time. But, yeah, the podcast, now, we, we, we decided to do a podcast, didn't we? Let's go back on to Super Source Black there. We decided to do, because we had so many ideas in our head, and we always talk about work, about business, about things that go right, about advertising, about stock, about customers and all that sort of thing we thought well whilst we're talking about it let us record it and put it together into some sort of podcast mm -hmm. we're not going to do a video podcast because that would just be what's a video podcast where you it's just video, a video then isn't where it you video a, like a pot like people talking back and forth which is basically that's like just a, a film they call it a video podcast you can watch huh. you can watch uh, which I suppose is fairly interesting, but for me, a podcast is great to listen to when you're running, yeah. when you're doing your workout, your weights, when, when, you're, when on, you're working, you don't really want to watch it. You could be travelling, really. you could be, yeah, it's nice to just... So we've got a nice podcast and you can find it on all the usual podcast players. It can be Apple, it can be Spotify, it can be Amazon, it could be on Google, it could be on Deezer. 
Mm-hmm. What's that? It's, it's this American podcast player. Oh. Deezer is <laughs> on uh, Comcast. It is on all of the uh, Pod Addict thing as well. Didn't know we were on Deezer, no? Yeah, Deezer, yeah. Didn't even know about Deezer. Deezer, Pod Addict. So we're there. So if you want to look at our uh, podcast, we are. All you've got to do is go to your favourite podcast player. I've changed it a little bit and I'll tell you why. So we, if you search for... Jewelry Talks, yeah, at the bench. Uh, Barbara Singh, um, is there a link on the At The Bench website? That would be good. <sighs> there is, but I haven't put the latest one on. But if you go to atthebench.com slash podcast, they will all be on there. Hmm. I haven't put the code on for the latest one, but it will be there shortly. But if you go on to Apple, if you go on to Google, if you go on to all your podcast players, search for Jewelry Talks at the Bench. We originally were just going to call it Talks at the Bench, but if you search for, like I wanted to search for, for a jewelry podcast, I put in jewelry, and we never came up because jewelry was not in the title. So the title is Jewelry Talks at the Bench, but it is Talks at the Bench. And it's just basically Louise and, my just, Louise and me just chatting away, isn't it? Waffling. Waffling. <laughs> waffling. Waffles at tea time. Waffles, That's at, what we waffles at tea it. time. Yeah, <laughs> but there's no jewelry in it and it wasn't really. Yeah, yeah so, people might think we're a cookery blog, so, blog so, podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so just search for that jewelry talks at the bench and have a listen. Let us know what you feel, what you think. We had a couple of nice emails today. Yeah. People who, who've watched it as well. So, please watch it, give us a rating, also follow or subscribe to the podcast as well. It helps uh, more than you think. And that's about it. Great. Anything else, Louise, before we start? No, I don't think so. No. Should we start? Yes, Is there anything coming do. into the chat that we need to uh, quickly talk about? I don't. I didn't notice anything, but there's lots of things in the chat which Brilliant. we can talk about, yes. Okay, so yes, yeah, so it's at thebench.com forward slash podcast. Only the first one's there. I have to update that, and I'll be doing that when I get home tonight. So, or just go to Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, search on your podcasts for Jewelry Talks at the Bench. And it's just Louise and me having a laugh. We usually got a glass of wine in front of us. We're chatting away, and we do have uh, a good time. Yeah. We sit there, <coughs> and we have a nice glass of wine, and we chat away, and it is really interesting. So thank you very much for everyone who has listened. So don't forget, go and have a listen. And it can be quite fun. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, so we should, should we start, Louise? Are you grabbing onto the <coughs> questions? I am, yes. My tummy is rumbling, my chest is wheezing, I'm making all kinds of funny noises, so I might actually <laughs> mute myself after reading the questions today. <laughs> to <go. coughs> And just, well, it's not, yeah, and I think it's because now that I, I know I can't cough, it just makes me want to go <laughs> all of the time. Sorry, oh, that was probably a bit loud. Yeah, just frightened. Woke yeah, everyone up. <laughs> all <laughs> right, so it, it is Monday, the 23rd of January. Entering the last week of January, where is the month gone? It is time for our usual regular Q&A question and answer session here on YouTube, 4 p.m. Louise, do we have our first question, please? No. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, yes, yes. Yes. David has got a question. I am making a DIY magnetic tumbler. Which size pins are best? Three mil, four mil or mixed sizes? Also, will barrel bright work in a magnetic tumbler? And if not, what do you use and where can I purchase it? Uh, We have a magnetic polisher. We've got a variety of pins. We want to have pins with our magnetic polisher. We want to get into those little nooks and crannies that little normally mixed media that you use in a barrel polisher will not get into. So that's what we've got. We have got thin pins. I think they are 0.3 of a millimeter and we've also got 0.5 of a millimeter. And we're just looking to see what sort of finish those pins leave. Um, I wouldn't have mixed media. I would always have pins. Mixed media is usually for things like barrel polishes, but I want to get into underneath those settings and all those little areas to leave a nice uniform finish. And I find that pins are going to be the best for that. Uh, So barrel bright, yes, you can use barrel bright. That's what we use in ours. It gets up a nice lot of foam. It coats it and makes it all good. 
What you must remember is that when you do get the pins, they are going to be pretty sharp. So you need to blunt them. Okay, so get every single pin and pass it. No, I'm only joking, you don't have to do that. Just run it with perhaps some old pieces or pieces of scrap or whatever you've got. Run it for about half an hour or so, or a bit more than that, to make sure that those pins are not that sharp. Make sure they're rounded off slightly because when you buy them, they are very sharp. So you need to use the, the, the magnetic polisher for a little while just to dull them slightly. But once you've done that, that's fine. And we've got, let's say, we've got two barrels and we've got, I think it's three mil, five mil, no, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and we're just playing around to see which is which. And to be honest, I don't think there's an awful lot of difference between them. That the 0.3 of a millimeter is going to get in holes where the 0.5 can't. So if you've got something that is really delicate, really sort of filigree, that is going to be the best thing. The thinner the pins, they're going to get into those little nooks and crannies to clean them. They don't necessarily polish. Ours don't really polish it. It just gives a lovely, nice, uniform surface. Uh, we can leave that surface and it is slightly sort of frosted, but it does get rid of all the... the, the that enables you to get in all those hard to reach areas that a bristle brush won't get to or your files or your emery sticks will not be able to get into and it does leave a lovely finish. So there we go. That's my answer to that one. Louise, let's have another one. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Put myself back on. Um, okay. Kenneth says, many thanks for the wonderful workshop on hinges. I would like to make the bangle in the extra video. Would I make the tank and groove joint before bending the bangle on the mandrel or after? No, because if, if you left it straight and then had to bend it, there is a chance that when you bend that little tongue, it may distort slightly. So I would always make the bangle first. So you have your bangle, whether it be a round bangle or an oval bangle. Say so you have an oval bangle, always try and get your joint slap bang there, right in the middle. Right in the middle. Like that there. So whether you use that to make the hinge or whether you use that to make the clasp, come to that in a little moment, and opposite that then is where you would use, um, again, so if you use your hinge here, you'd have your clasp down here. If you have your clasp there, you have the hinge down here. So always make it oval or round first. Then you can be sure you've got that curvature of that tongue <coughs> and the groove or the mortise and tenon exactly the same. So do exactly what you got there and that is gonna work no worries at all. And talking about hinges and clasps, this time next week, we have another workshop on clasps. So keep an eye out on your socials, uh, keep an eye out on your emails as well, because we'll be sending out uh, on Wednesday all the necessary um, bits and pieces. There'll be a checkout if you're a member of At The Bench, a paid member of At The Bench, it is gonna be included in with your membership. You will get a little code that you can enter into the checkout that will turn the checkout into zero, so you don't pay a thing. But if you're a, a, a free view member of At The Bench or you just simply wanna watch the workshop, it's gonna be 15 pounds. And that's what we do. It's 15 pounds, it is so cheap, isn't it? It really is cheap. You have a three hour workshop, the this, the last one we did was all about hinges and we did an extra film because everyone loved the tongue and groove or the mortise and tenon and I did an extra film that was over half an hour. So we gave you a three hour, totally hours, not just chit chat, it was three hours of films for £15. And I think that's absolutely brilliant, fantastic value. £15, 15, yeah. 15 pounds. We don't want to make it too much because then we want to make it, again, all-inclusive. If you just want to learn about hinges, you want to learn about class, learn about rolling mills, bezel setting, whatever, you can just pay £15 pound for the class that you want. And I think it's fantastic value. So that will be next Monday, 2pm. Louise? When will the emails be going out? Wednesday. Now? Wednesday, okay. Tomorrow? Yes. No, day after tomorrow. Yes. Okay, yes. if you don't get your email though, you can get in touch with me and I'll sort you out. Yes, but it'll be going up Wednesday, <coughs> but don't, don't, don't get in contact with Louis, so like 10 o'clock Wednesday and go, oh, haven't had my email, wait a day until Thursday. And please do check your junk folder as well, because sometimes I think we do go into there, don't we? Yes, so <coughs> check your spam me. folder, check your junk folder. When you get the email from us, and it should come from no reply at, at the bench, save that email address, 
into your address book, that then would ensure that the emails will continue to go into your inbox and they not get diverted into your spam or delete folder. My darling Louise, what's the next? Would you like another question? They would. Okay. Um, Carol is asking for tips on getting oval bezels straight. Straight. Oval bezels <coughs> straight. What do you mean by oval bezels straight? Any tips on getting oval bezels on straight? On straight. Oh, on straight. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, no worries. I took um, a word out there. <laughs> so, the, the hardest thing is with, with an oval bezel, you've got to look right, isn't it? There's a reason why you're, right. you're asking, what can we do? Now, um, we sell a tool in our store, store.atthebench.com, or go to atthebench.store. It's called a head and shank tweezer. The tweezer has a profile that does that, and it comes out here, and there's like a little paddle by here. All right. Some people say, oh, I can't get on with these, it, it, whatever. Be patient with it. This will help you get your bezels right. So the idea is you've got your oval bezel, you want to put it onto a shank. If you rely upon just putting it all together and resting it and getting the shank, uh, here's your bezel here, getting your shank coming around to hold it into place, invariably that is going to twist, that may go all over the place and you have to try and do two solders to get it right. It goes wrong, you've got to try and desolder it, move it around trying to get it right. This is where this, that's my phone, I can't wipe the board in my phone, this is where the head and shank tweezer comes in really handy. It looks like this. Uh, we've put it on um, our Instagram page. Head, it's called the head shank tweezer. And it helps putting together heads and shanks, hence the name. So what you would do, you would then arrange your uh, bezel. And I'm gonna try and draw this upside down. So there's your bezel, and you wanna put on your ring shank that goes around. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't have really done this. This is going to be hard for me to do this, isn't it? Let's have a look. Okay, so you want to put on your ring shank, you've got the whole thing upside down, okay? Which makes sense, because you can see exactly what's going on. You then put this head and shank tweezer into place, so the paddle will go underneath their head here. You've got this part that goes over the shank. And that looks a complete mess, I must admit. <laughs> Uh, but I'm sure if Louise can just look on head and shank tweezer on the store, she can put a link into this, which will make what I'm trying to explain a lot easier. You set the whole thing up with that head and shank tweezer. There's a little slidey thing by here that you move up to hold it and to squeeze the tweezer into place. Don't put too much pressure onto there, otherwise it will completely collapse it. But by doing that, you can set it all up by eye, look at it, turn the bezel, adjust the height, this, that, and the other. When you're happy with it, then you can solder it all together. And it's just a fantastic means of positioning the bezel exactly right. You're not having to rely upon balancing or looking down on top and trying to solder it and then the bezel. This holds everything in place. So that's the paddle by here. You've got, um, here is your bezel, this by here, and the shank comes around on either side, like that, like that. Holds it all together, your flame comes in, you solder, you solder, jobs are good. I love it, they're not expensive. We sell lots of these because I really do believe head and shank tweezers. And that is simple, that's all I would do. Go and buy yourself there. Yes, let me <coughs> Just put the link on. Oh, thank you, for the brilliant. Story. Thank you very much for that. Okay. <coughs> Um, yes, Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. How can one avoid fire stain or fire scale when fusing 925 silver on 925 silver, e.g. decorative work? Uh, the only way to do it is just purely to coat it with something like fire scoff. We love fire scoff. It's expensive, but it's brilliant. Fire scoff. Again, we sell this in our store. Fire, literally fire scoff. It is a barrier. It is something like a flux, but much better than a flux. Much better than borax, much better than all flux, much better than boric acid. It's brilliant because it comes in a little ch -ch -ch 
atomizer. So you warm up the piece slightly, you spray the fire scuff on, it acts as a flux, but also acts as a barrier. And that stops the oxygen from the flame hitting the naked surface and the, the metal, the surface absorbing the oxygen, which then affects the copper, which turns into oxidization. And that's the reason why you get the fire scale. If you don't want to spend the money on fire scuff, any sort of flux will work but you've got to make sure that you've got a nice even coating across the whole of the piece. Any little patches that happen to be bare and there's no flux, there's a chance you're going to get some fire scale onto that area. So make sure that what I would do is gently warm the piece up, then I would get past my borax, just gently paint it over the surface, heat it up a bit more, so then the borax then starts to bubble and then goes together. Any little patches where it's pulled up, Put a bit more borax in its place and make sure the surface or, or flux or whatever you're using make sure the surface is nice and coated then you can be sure you can put your pieces on the top because that's only going to be a flux and you can fuse them or you can solder them into place and because the torch the flame is not touching the surface the surface is not absorbing directly the oxygen from the flame it acts as a barrier so that would be the best way to do it are you okay with your voice Yes, I'm yes. okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. No <coughs> Sorry, I hope I'm not being too annoying. No. <coughs> I mean, any more than usual. No. <laughs> um, You're not Julie, annoying, Finally, <laughs> <laughs> Julie is asking how to solder 2 mil gold rope chain. Aha. Uh -huh. I love this. You don't solder it. Don't solder the rope chain. Really hard for me to try and explain this because i got to try and draw a rope chain. Okay. But we used to um, oh, you're really, really, really going to test me here now, aren't you? Um, so yeah, you've got your rope chain coming around like this, haven't you? Yeah. And on the end, you've got the rope coming around, da, 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 da. There's like a hole that over here. And then that thing carries on like this. Uh, this comes around, comes around, and then you've got like a space. So you've got a little, at the end of the rope chain, you've got one piece of chain with a bit of a gap on the end. And on the opposite side, you've got the bit of rope chain with a gap. In the old days, what we used to do was cut that, cut that. I gotta try and explain this with my fingers. So you cut and you cut, okay? And you, then you open each one, put them in, close them and twist them like this. So the continuation of those links just go around. All right, does that make sense? And then when, where they touch, by there and by there, I would solder but not anymore, because I feel that by soldering it, you're affecting the color, especially if it's Italian and it's uh, been heavily plated. You put a flame on that, the plating burns off, you're back to that rosy color, dirty color underneath, then you're gonna have to replate it and then you're into, into having trouble. So I would not do that. So you've got the ends coming round, you've got the ends coming round. What I would do is get two jump rings. This works for silver. So get two jump rings, the outer diameter of the jump rings. Okay, so the outer diameter of the jump ring here is the same diameter or width of the rope chain. Does that make sense? So if this is a two mil rope chain, this is a two mil jump ring. Make sure it's a thin jump ring, a very light jump ring. So on the ends of your rope chain, as I said, you've got those two areas that come together, and I think there may be something like this coming around like this. So you've got the ends, and these are open. The rest of the chain is pretty much solid, okay? So what you would do, you would then pass a jump ring through this one here. You would not loop it onto this one, but there's gonna be a slight hole a bit further along. Put that jump ring through that hole, and then it comes around the back, all right, so that is how that would look like that. So now what you wanna do is get your second jump ring, put it through the hole here and pass that through. That will go behind, behind through this light little gap here and come along here and go into there. <laughs> I've seen the awful drawing, Andrew. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. That has to go that way, actually. So instead of splitting the, 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 the chain, putting it together and doing that, you're actually passing a jump ring through this hole, 
not through the first hole, but there's another hole up by here on, the, on, a, on a rope chain. And then you pass the jump ring through this hole up here and pass it through there. And then you've got two jump rings. You don't need to solder those jump rings because those jump rings are going to be more, sold, more secure and stronger than the rest of the chain. If you want to solve those jump rings, you can do, but we just simply bend them back together, bend them back and forth a little bit, just to harden them until they come together perfectly. We twist them until they're hidden inside the rest of the chain. So that's what, how we do rope chains. It's not the perfect way of doing it, but you don't have to solder it. You don't have to then polish it. You then don't have to replate the chain. And we find that those links never come undone. Invariably what will happen is the chain will break before those come undone. Is that usually because by the time they come in broken, they've been well, usually yanked by a dog? Yeah. Or they're all... pulled by a, a toddler? That's the, the, I think the main yeah. cause, of, cause of breakage that certainly I see. Yeah, they're always all pa the parrots. Parrots? Yeah, parrots on people's shoulders. They they peck peck at their oh, chains. Right. Really? Is that a problem? And we've had in the past, yeah. It's probably adults and children, <clears throat> children and animals. Um, I think his name is John Silver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's true, isn't it? So yes. usually then by, by the time they've been pulled and snapped, yes. there's a weakness and yes. they're likely probably unfortunately to break it again. So it's important to probably mention that as well. It is, yes. You know, your joints will theory stay together because those jump rings, I said, are stronger than the hollow links. Um, it's really hard for me to try and draw it because I'm I am not bad as drawn as you guys know. But when it comes to rope chains, I'm actually hopeless. <laughs> but that's why we always measure to the breakage from the bolt ring or the mm. whatever the end is. Exactly. Um, Taking procedures. A idea for a podcast. Yes, mm -hmm. idea for a podcast, taking procedures. Mm -hmm. um, so that, because otherwise the customer might come back and say... It's broken elsewhere. Mm. Exactly. And you can prove then that it's not your repair that's failed, it's in fact another... Break elsewhere. Package ...that you warned them could potentially happen, they've gone away with that information. Exactly. So, so you guarantee your solder joints, your yeah, repairs, but not the rest of the chain. Exactamundo. Yes. Oh, my mechanism. Oh! You know, I was actually <laughs> saying something of value for once then, wasn't I? Could you hear me? <laughs> I was contributing then. Did you hear Louise then? Oh, or do you want her to go through it all over <laughs> again? <laughs> it's because I'm... <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm like it. that. And it's, Don't worry I'm worried that it. you can hear me and it sounds horrible. <laughs> Did you hear me? Oh, that's a shame. Pe oh, clearly you must yeah, pet proofed you. Yeah, perhaps you heard then. As long yeah. as you heard Louise, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Don't worry about turning your mic off. Everyone knows. No, I turned it I turned it back on now I'm on. We could still hear you. Oh good. Okay. That's all right. Thank you, Penny. <laughs> Just far away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um Okay. Stuart is saying when roller printing a bangle, mm -hmm. um is it better to roller print the metal first before cutting it to shape, e.g. rounding the corners or to cut the metal first, then pass it through the mill? Um, because you're effectively rolling the bangle and sort of stretching it, if you had, say, a plain torque bangle, and the just plain torque bangle was like that, and then it was plain, and you decided to just simply round the ends, just like that, yep, and <coughs> just like that, they're going to be nice and semicircular. But when you put the texture plate on top of it, what will happen invariably was that that bangle will get slightly longer because you're effectively pushing a texture into a plate. As a result of doing that, the metal will stretch both majority, mostly in length as opposed to width. And so your little nicely perfect, cool semicircle may end up <coughs> not slightly elongated. Yeah. It may end up long like that, or it may even end up slightly wonky if the pattern has been pushing on one side than the other. So I would always get your bangle strip the right length before you start, roller print it, then come back and you can make those ends perfectly gorgeous exactly where you need to. And perhaps if you do this enough times, say it extends perhaps five mil and you've got to cut five mil off the end, 
perhaps then you can have a bangle strip that is five millimeters less, knowing that it will stretch you five millimeters. So I would always get my bangle strip the right length, roller print it, then cut it on the ends so you can be sure you get the nice perfect ends and they're gonna be nice and semicircular if you want them semicircular or whatever shape you're gonna get on the ends, invariably it will stretch. <coughs> yes, Lou, is your microphone on now? It is. Yes. Good. Okay, right, so another question. Um, uh, negotiator, hi. Um, Andrew and Louise, you're going to Tucson, Arizona for the largest champ show in the world. No. no. We were hoping to go to Vicenza, but that didn't happen. And I said, let's go to Tucson. You did. And we're still okay. here. We're still <laughs> <laughs> We're not going this year, are we? We'll go. We'll get there. We'll try and get there for next year. We'll book it in now for next year, shall we? Could we be going to Vicenza next year? We don't know. We should have gone to Tucson this year then, really, shouldn't we? We should have taken the opportunity and gone, yes. But we didn't. So, no. No, but if you're in Vegas, if you're in Las Vegas for the JCK show, we should be going there. Mm. That would be nice. So, yeah, JCK show, Vegas. Um, not quite sure which hotel it's on the strip. I can't remember. But, yeah, it's the beginning of June. It's going to be hot. It's going to be lush. <laughs> Good. Do you want another question? Um, we could have another question, or do you want me to do my little bit? Yes. Because I have a photo from um, from Kevin. Is Kevin on? Can I? Have a look. Is Kevin on? No, I don't think Kevin is. Um, anyway, um, Kevin's given me permission to show his bangle. Mm -hmm. okay. Just get the picture up. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. You can show? Can I? Yes. <clears throat> so this is Kevin's first bangle. It's a freshwater pearl, freshwater pearl spiral bangle. Um, my first one. Nice. Yeah. Isn't it gorgeous? I love the hammered texture here. Yes. And I love the fact that the pearl is wrapped because that's going to help protect that pearl. It will, yes. Because as we know, pearls it are... Yes. Quite delicate gemstones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Gorgeous. I like that. Yeah. I love the design. It's quite unusual, isn't it? That's nice. Yes. Yeah. Lovely work, Kevin. Love it. Cool. Kevin, yeah, I don't think he's... My, my at taggy thing doesn't work. No. Hmm. So I don't know if he's here or not. Okay. Anyway, yeah, yeah, lovely work. It is lovely. Yeah, thank you so much yes. for sharing that, Kevin. It's gorgeous. Yes. And Susan, we have to book up in a year. If you've been to Tucson, email us and let us know where the best place to go because we haven't the scooby-doo, do we? We haven't the faintest idea about Tucson, but just you know, email us. Just let us know the best places to go. That would mm. be brilliant, wouldn't it? And where to stay. The best yeah, place fab. to stay. Cause we'll definitely try and get there next year if you possibly can, even just for two or three days. Yeah, good. Brilliant. And yes, we can all meet up in Vicenza next year. I expect Louise and I will be demonstrating on um, Durston's booth. We didn't go this year because the booth was a lot smaller this year than what he anticipated. But next year the booth plans to be bigger and Louise and I should be there in Vicenza and you're more than welcome to come over and say hello. Yeah, that'd be nice. Do you have another question? Yes. Um, <clears throat> but it was a gorgeous bangle. Yeah, lovely. Okay. Um, Kevin, yay! Kevin, hi Kevin, yeah, we love your bangle. Excellent, Fab. it was good, mm. it was um, good, thank you for that. Okay, uh, Dylan is looking for some helpful tips reducing gas pockets and porosity when sand casting. I need a lot of round bars, <coughs> five to six inch long at six gauge. Oh, I meant mixed size pins, PI9NS pins. Mm, I don't know. I meant mixed size pins. Mm, it could be. Okay. Okay. What is the Vicenza show? Sandra, it is uh, Vicenza Oro. It's in Vicenza in Italy. Uh, massive, massive halls full of lovely, lovely jewelry. And also there's a Vicenza Oro, which is another hall totally for uh, jewelry, tools, machines, equipment, ultrasonics, lamp are there with the puck, Durson's there with the tools, photography, Everything is there. It's absolutely brilliant. The jewellery is stunning. Anyway, so I go back to this. So how to reduce air pockets. Now, when you come to Sandcast, 
A lot of times you think it's porosity when you cast, but nine times out of 10, it's not porosity. It's the grains of sand that happen to get into the, the melt or it gets into the mold. So the majority of times you do have to make sure that when you cut the pouring channels, you remove every single little bit of loose sand. I always put my finger on the inside and rub it around to try and dislodge any loose grains of sand. I will get a paintbrush and I will put the paintbrush around everything, around the pouring channel, the actual sprue that goes into the mold. Make sure that then you compact it. Now the harder that you compact the sand, the tighter that sand's going to be and the less likely you're going to have little bits of sand being dislodged. So you've got to make sure that your mold is loose sand free because when you pour the silver into it you will sometimes have what you may think is porosity in the the main body but it's actually little bits of sand that get into it, burn, become a little bit smaller when you open the mold, those little burnt bits of sand drop out and you can see them little pot marks where those little grains of sand have been along the length. Um, I've never had a problem. I have always used Delft clay. I will swear by Delft clay as opposed to anything else because Delft clay I find is finer. It gets a more compact, hard um, surface when you hammer it. You use things like Petrobond it's, it's coarser, it's, it's more open, and you've really got to hammer it far more to compress it. And if you don't hammer the living daylights out of it, it will be slightly open, and against that will be slightly porous, which then will become um, the problem because loose sand will come off that and get into your mold. I've always used Delft clay. I have never had a problem. I've used Petrobond in the past, and the surface detail on Petrobond is not a patch on Delft clay, which is finer. Delft clay is like twice, three times the price of Petrobond, but I can justify that because my castings are far superior surface-wise than Petrobond or any other type of sand that you use for sand casting. So you could be filing, you could be filling holes in what you think is porosity, but it's not. I'm there and I've got my finished article when you're still working with, with the item from Petrobond. So that is what I personally would do. Buy yourself a bag of Delft clay and I bet you, you will not go back. More expensive, but less time finishing up. And I don't think there's any problems with porosity. Also, what you also got to remember is and we're going to talk chocolate. We're going to talk chocolate. Don't forget that when you're melting silver down, as we said a bit earlier about silver loving the oxygen coming from the flame, what you want to make sure is that you heat that silver up quickly. Now when I say quickly, you don't want to have a really harsh hissing flame from your torch because that flame is oxygen rich. You're chucking oxygen at the molten silver and the silver's going, oh, I want that, I want all that oxygen. And it fills up, it absorbs, and that sounds stupid, but it absorbs, that is stupid, but it actually absorbs ox oxygen into the <laughs> silver and the silver will bloat. Now, when you buy a bar of chocolate, we always use this analogy, you buy a Yorkie bit of chocolate, it's solid, yeah? You buy an Aero in this country, it looks solid, but it's full of air bubbles. And that is exactly what the silver looks like if you put too much oxygen onto it when you cast. Another little tip is if you're melting down silver, don't put the, 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 the silver scrap or the silver bits and pieces in your crucible that is cold and then start to heat up because you've got to heat the crucible first or as well as heating up the silver and your flame is going to be on that silver for longer than if you simply heated the crucible at first until it's nice bright red, then add your silver, because then you are only have, having to heat up the silver, so your torch is on that silver less than if you put the silver into a cold crucible. And I promise you, if you do those, you get Delft clay, you ensure it's hardly compacted, you make sure there's no loose sand, make sure you do what I said with the melting down, I guarantee you'll have better, better casts. Oh, let's have another question. 
Okay. <clears throat> um, Ray is asking, is wire wrap jewellery a good starting point to get into making jewellery and becoming a goldsmith? Now we've got somebody on here that does wire wrapping. S yeah, Stephen does um, quite intricate wire wrapping, doesn't he? Oh, and the, yeah, wonderful um, wire wrapped work and other yes. uh, goldsmithing as well, lapidary, I think he's starting to get to, into as well. And yes, yeah, Stephen has... Um, answered it really well I think. Okay. So excellent. yeah, it basically is a good it's, way. it's a it's for becoming a jeweller absolutely however it has little to do with goldsmithing. Yep. Which has hit the nail on the head. But then I know jewellers who do repairs who don't know how to do wire wrapping. Mm. I've never done wire wrapping. You do you, yeah, you do like wire wrap beads. Yes, which, the, yeah, like the ends of the yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. But I've which never Which is quite important you know, to know. Seeing Seeing some of is this Stevens, you said? Yes. Yeah. Some of his designs in that with intricacies of twisting mm. wire and this is like one piece and they twist it around the end, it comes around, it does this, it does, and like all fans are is absolutely brilliant and mm. that that's a skill in itself. Yeah. Um, does it help with your progression to become a goldsmith or silversmith? I would not necessarily say so. I think simple wire wrapping, if you can make something and create something with it gives you encouragement. Exactly. If you can make something and have something finished that somebody can wear, I think that is hugely motivational mm. and makes you want to move on. But if you're just practicing techniques, which is obviously vital yes. to learn, isn't it? Yes. But it's also important to actually make things to keep your motivation levels up. Yes. So yeah, in that respect. Yes, you could I use think it it's a good as a thing means to do. getting money to then progress your um, your journey. Yeah. But yeah. But excellent, thank you for answering that, Stephen. Yeah, thank you. nice one, Stephen, cool. Cool. Um, let's see. Um, Helen is saying, is there a part three of the settings in tight places video showing the stone being set? Yes, for some reason or that, it hasn't been uploaded. We'll try and get that done um, this week. Good. But yes, there is a part three. I don't know why. Um, I think we've just forgotten about uploading it because we've been so in, in, in you know, everything else with um with the workshops yep. so i do apply but that'll be up with better luck this week for you yes yes Louise. yes um is there a small head shank tweezer with the smaller circumference to use on jump rings no your best bet then would be to perhaps have something like a pair of uh, cross lock <coughs> tweezers or what you could always do is grab yourself a pair of normal stainless steel tweezers. This is a simple stainless steel AA tweezers. And what you could easily do is bend one of the top jaws here into a slightly rounded uh, doofa like this. So, so it comes like this, okay? And there's your tweezer underneath. So what you'd have to do is most probably trim this end of the tweezer a little bit shorter to do that. But then what you'd also do, because the tweezer does this, okay? So there's your tweezer and it does this. What you can easily do is make a little bit of a, a collar that will slide. Let me move it this way. So here is your uh, pair of tweezers, okay? You would then would bend that little bit that does that, and then you'd have to shorten that a little bit. So those are your tweezers. But what happens is the tweezers open up. So simply make yourself a simple bit of silver a little bit of silver collar. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just that does that. Okay. Like that collar and you slide that up your tweezers here. And the further you slide that little collar up your tweezers, the closer they will become. And you can do something very, very easy and simple like that. Got that for free. Mm -hmm. Let's have a got that for free. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, do these. let's have another one. Uh, Tanya, hello Tanya. Um, can I draw down silver plate uh, of one mil to eight mil, please, using a rolling mill? No. Oh. Why not? Mm. Draw down or roll down? Can I draw down silver plate? Okay, so uh, you should be able to roll it down. Not a problem. Square wire, is it, or round wire? S silver plate. Of one mil to eight mil. Point eight mil, I would have thought. That oh, would be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, not quite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, <clears throat> I'd say yes, you should be able to. But the surface of that 
you wouldn't be able to do anything. Roll down, with. sorry. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to roll down round wire. It would have to be square wire. So yes, you can. You're gonna have to make sure that the surfaces of your roller mill, your, um, these rolls, yeah, you have to make sure that these grooves are beautiful and highly clean because as soon as you put that square metal through, any marks are going to be put into the metal, into your plated wire. You cannot polish it, you cannot buff it out because the plating is going to come off. So when that comes out of the rolling mill, that's it, it has to be finished. Plus, you may find that it won't be as highly polished either. So you're going to have a problem with that. If you then try and, and rub it with a rag, you may find the plating will come off. So it is possible, but don't expect it to have the same durability when you, once you've rolled it as it would do as if it was the original size. Okay. Yes, Luke. Janet has a question regarding ordering international. Is UK Post still struggling with posting abroad? It is. Yes, mm. we... <laughs> Uh, we use Royal Mail, International Tract, and there is a delay, there was a delay I think all of last week. We've got a few parcels um, backed up because of that, and hopefully that should be resolved shortly. So yes, Royal Mail, International Post, there is a problem with that. Not our problem, it's the Royal Mail's problem. But we're going to be well, it's to be, become our problem, it isn't it? It has now become our problem <laughs> mm. because we can't get parcels out. But we should be getting, if, if it isn't resolved by the middle of the week, we're going to have to send things like UPS. This just cost us so much time and money, isn't it? And I, you know, I, I get why they're striking. I'm, I'm not saying it, I'm they unsupportive. They didn't strike, they got hacked. Oh, this is something else now, yes. isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. the, the strikes in the past yeah. have been massively, obviously, yeah. massively disruptive. Yes. Um, but there we are, they've got the right to strike, and yet. Yeah, good for them and um, they have been hacked the international parcels international letters are going through but parcels they're still trying to work it out mm. so yeah but it has cost us a lot of time <laughs> oh my God. Really anyway has. i'm not here to moan am i um jane is saying when using fires off fire scoff yes. i am waiting till the wires off is gently heated before Apply. adding the solder yes yes that's yes. correct. So, so yes, yeah. so so yes, yeah. so what you want to do, you don't want to spray the fire scuff on the metal when it's cold. You want to just put a little bit of temperature in that metal. So when you spray, the water evaporates straight away that leaves that lovely coating across the piece. If you spray it and it's too cold, then you warm it up, there's a chance the fire scuff and the water will pool up into little areas. Don't give it a chance to pool up. It's gotta be warm enough, perhaps you can't say 50 degrees, 70 degrees, 80 degrees. It's got to be hot enough so when you spray it, the water will evaporate. Must that's going to be close to 100 degrees, isn't it? Because water boils 100. So do that. It's not hot enough to damage the metal or to discolour the metal, but it's hot enough to make the water evaporate and then the fire scuff will be covering the whole surface. And that was my stomach just making that noise. <gasps> and you don't want to hear this then. Stephen's making sausage and broccoli or a chiet. Did I say that right? Say What's that, that? Say that again. Sausage and broccoli. I'm Googling that. I'm going to... Because I, I don't know what that is, but I love the sound of that. What are you having, Steve? Ooh. What's that? It's pasta... splats that you put your thumb in. <laughs> I don't know how to describe them. You've got action man bow ties, haven't you? Shells. Shells, yes. Macaroni, you and got, that's... You've got radi radiator, radio, radio ones, the like radiators. <laughs> no. Yeah. Arachietti, arachiet. Nice. And that's just Ooh. plain pasta. Not like flying saucers. Okay. Anyway, yeah, looks good, Steve. Good. Okay. Um... <laughs> Go for it. Okay. I'm hungry now. Uh, Clay, me next workshop on making pet-proof jewellery. Yeah, that would be good, <laughs> wouldn't it? Okay. Um, Penny is saying, can we have a group trip to Vicenza? That would be we cool, We can all meet on Vicenza, can't we? That'd be good. That'd be awesome, yes. Um, but the flights, from, the flights from Bristol are really cheap. They're like £45 <coughs> return from Bristol to uh, Marco Polo. But then it's an hour's drive then from Marco Polo to Vicenza. And I think during the show, I think there is a shuttle back and forth. 
just let you know. Good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> negotiator, you guys come to Tucson. I will buy you a nice steak dinner. Medium oh. rare. Thank you very much. Yes. Lovely. Yeah, you Lovely. Um, will hold you to that. Yes. Nice. Just to make you even more hungry, Andrew. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Sandra's husband is from Vicenza. Ah, oh, oh. fab. Maybe time for a European... <laughs> Vacation, definitely. And my chat's just jumped again. Where am I? Um, There's a cruise on the map gas just up a bit. Oh. Yep, done that, done that, okay. done that. Um, good. Uh, David, I've used Petra Bond and it's awful. <laughs> mm, I have as well. Do you like it's, it? Mm, I can't stand Petra Bond. Oh, there we are. Sorry. Yeah, you've got to bash it. It's, it's, it's gritty, it's grainy. You've got to bash it so hard, and I don't find that very good. But Delft clay is finer, it's more expensive, but it's better, if you ask me. So good. Um, go Stephen has a friend coming over this week to smith an engagement ring for his hopefully soon to be. Oh, oh what a lovely privilege. Very nice. Wonderful. How exciting. Um, Claire, there's a very good example on YouTube of that problem happening with Petra Bond to pour an aluminium guitar. Mm. I was yelling, you didn't pack it hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Shouting, I always shout. Books, I shout <laughs> at books. I buy a book, I buy a new book. I buy books all the time, all the, even the basic books. And I look at it and I am reading it in the place that a gentleman normally reads Books. Andrew! Sorry, and I am sh No! No, that's <laughs> off. Why? No! Who taught? No, that's the... Ah! Oh. Anyway, sorry. Louis, have another question. We didn't need to know that, did we, really? I was wondering why I'm shouting from the bathroom. <laughs> I didn't like to ask. Um, right. Um, and videos. Oh, what's videos on YouTube? Oh, my God. Um, I shout. Anyway, sorry, let's get another one. Sorry. We don't need to know any more about that. Well, I don't watch videos in the toilet. No. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> I've heard enough. Uh, David um, has got a question. It is, is it better to use a crucible for melting rather than a dish or scarifier, yeah. scarif scarifier, yeah, scarifier to melt the silver and reduce contact between the flame and the silver? Uh, I always use a crucible, but make sure you can use a crucible. You can use a, you can use, you can use one of these little guys as well and put that within a whip. To, to pour it, but I would always make sure that whatever you've got your silver to go into, make sure that into is really, really hot, bright red. This is a new one. I would coat this with borax and coat that, but I would always heat this first, heat your mold up slightly as well. Then when this crucible is hot enough, mm -hmm. then put your silver in. It doesn't matter whether you put it in a scorifier, whether you put it in, a, in a, like a charcoal block or some sort of graphite crucible or a normal ceramic crucible as long as it is hot enough so it doesn't absorb the heat because what you're doing you're heating the silver but also then you're heating the um, crucible at the same time so heat the crucible first red hot silver in it won't take long then to melt because not only is the flame melting the silver you've also got the heat of the crucible helping to melt the silver as well good go for it uh, negotiator says, when you make something beautiful and people liked it, it keeps you going forward to the next. Yes. Mm, exactly yeah. right. Fabulous. Um, Susan was wire wrapped, deprived. Mommy wouldn't let me have wire oh. as a child. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, David's got a question. Are there follow on parts to the patination videos? I don't know. Well, you're the man who should know. Uh, are there any uh, uh, follow-up? I don't know. I think the patination ones were an age ago. I'd have to see. I'd have to have a look. If you can just email Louise, just put down the URL of the uh, the videos for us to have a look at, and I'll certainly come back to you on that by all means. And Louise will make sure I come back to you. Good. Yes. Uh, Stephen saying thank you for the pat on the back with my wire wrapping. Um, I have a hard time accepting compliments. Ah, hmm. oh, this is another thing I think will be a good podcast topic is yes. is imposter syndrome and yeah. Do you get imposter syndrome ever, Andrew? I feel that I'm not good enough. Mm, I'm going to know the answer <laughs> to this question. <laughs> um, I think from a young age, 
when I say young age, I mean perhaps when I'm in university. That I always thought when I was in school, I was very insecure. Mm. I always looked down. I never looked up. I was never up, awake and alert. I was always head down, always embarrassed about the way perhaps I looked. I was skinny. Aww. I had hair all up like this all over the place. My mother never used to like cutting my hair. Um, I was really insecure. I think that I never used to like talking within within school. Perhaps I used to uh, stand up and like read a passage from a book. Oh, don't ask me to do that. Oh, I, I just hated it and I just could not stand it. And I went through school, I think, being very insecure. Um, so what changed? Um, um, I started my own business. I think you've got and to... I think, sorry, I think then you have to come <coughs> across as authoritative. You have to come across as knowing what you're doing and being able to tell a customer how you're going to do something or why you're going to do something. And I think because of that, it completely turned the way I felt. It, to having to be confident and understanding, it turned everything around. But it did take a while because mm. I still came out oh, not quite sure what to do, what to do. But that was a big turning point for me. We're going to investigate that because that's very interesting, actually, and how you managed to <laughs> how you managed to. Um, mm, mm. Perhaps I'll interview you for a podcast because I know you yeah. had a. I'm sure. Do you mind me saying mm. you had a a stammer? I had a very bad stammer. A bad and stammer. And I still do have a stammer. Some you things, know. and I think this is why you talk slowly. Yes. And deliberately. I do. And then sometimes when I do get excited. Yeah. I do trip up <laughs> on certain words. Yeah. And certain words, uh, you know, the usual ones that I'm going to say now is sausage. And I usually have to pause before I say sausage because it has to be a break from what I'm telling you, what I'm saying, and the next word, which is sausage. Which, to be honest, I don't have to use that much when I make jewellery. They say the word sausage. But you see, whenever I come to, <laughs> come to say the word sausage, I stop and pause. Otherwise, if I can do the word sausage, it really doesn't work. So if I, I ask you for a silver sausage dog... If, I, if you ask me for a silver studs. sausage dog, <laughs> I will always pause before I say the word that I do stammer on. Mm. And I find by doing that, it stops me, and then I say the word. See, this, yeah, this is good stuff, and we should be recording this for a podcast, actually. <laughs> yeah. But I look it's forward to you putting together some questions for me. But I yeah. think it'll be interesting, because it's... Um, I think a lot of us suffer with imposter syndrome and um, confidence in, in ourselves and selling mm. work. Absolutely. And I think it would be an interesting thing to explore mm. and how you overcome it. Okay. Mm. That would be one for podcasts. Get those questions coming in. So that days. will be good. So if you've got any questions, actually, um, that you want me to ask Andrew syndrome. about imposter syndrome and how he's overcome yeah. issues with confidence, send them to me, louise at andrewberry.co.uk, and we can, yeah, we can mm. ask him all our questions and, and, yeah. and yes. And let you know the answers. And I think even though... Sorry, I, I should have I sprung that on you now, haven't I? <laughs> but, I but, but the thought, if someone said, right, you have to get on stage and talk to all these people, I would freeze because I would be absolutely terrified. But saying that, find wearing glasses is good because, as you know... Not, not sunglasses. Not so much. <laughs> said, but my daughter, one of my daughter's children got married in November and I had to do my father of the bride speech to 180 people. And the thought of doing that was, oh my goodness me. But I put my glasses on so I could read my bit of paper. But as I looked up, everybody was blurred. And I found that really helped me because they were all blurred. I couldn't see them looking at me. And all I was looking at was, I was looking up with my glasses on, but I was looking back and forth to my sheet and I was reading what I had on the sheet just to make sure the air was going right. But if I took my glasses off and perhaps if I was looking at everybody, perhaps I would go, Oh my gosh, look at everybody. But because they were blurred, they all blended into one. <laughs> so perhaps that helps. Perhaps do something like that. It's a sea of heads that, and clothes. I know, I know everybody <laughs> says, oh, imagine them all naked and that sort of thing. Do you know what? That doesn't I, help. That wouldn't have helped in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> but, but blurring everybody out, I think, really helped. Sorry, I digress. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I made you digress. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good. So we'll have a little Get think some about questions that in then. for me. Yeah, please. absolutely. Yes. Send me your questions if there's anything that um, you'd like me to ask him. Uh, negotiator is saying, Did you, uh, have you or anybody, or no, have you or anybody, or did anything from India dye's texture plates and has not received them? 
Who's ordered the texture plates from whom? From India. From India. Texture plates and it's not received them. Have you or anybody no. order? No, we we've, we've had anybody we've, anything we've, order, oh, order anything from India. Dice texture plates and has not received them. Sorry. No, we've ordered bits and pieces from Mechie Supplies ages and ages ago. Could we wanted a particular heart shape cutter, didn't we? So we bought the heart shape cutter, and we also had some texture plates and some some dice in them, and they did actually come through. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, we've not experienced any so issues no, with. No, everything has come through. Uh, so no, I'm afraid we don't. Okay, Can't but yeah, if you if you've got any experience that could help. Yeah, I'm going to need to wrap it up, Louise, because it's five past five. Is it five. really? Yeah, my tummy is telling me it's time to go home. Yes. Zen oh, with Andrew. Tanya. Tanya, you're doing amazing. Oh, my gosh, yes. But this is it. This absolutely is, amazing. Again, this is This what is what's great without the bench as well, is that if you... If you're not the bench member and you say, I want some advice, I want some feedback... And it's hard as well, I think, when you were learning on your own or you're self-taught, it's hard to know where you are. And certainly me, I like to know, like when I started learning the saxophone, I decided I wanted to do grades, which a lot of people said, well, you're 40 and that's really, you know, why are you doing that? And it's like, I need to know, I need a benchmark and I need to know, no pun intended, and I need to know where I sit. Hmm. And that's not important to some people, they're just happy doing their own thing and that's great. But I need to know where I sit in the scale of things because I'm always aspiring then to the next thing. So yes. that works well for me. Yes. So yeah, and that's where you can be approached and, yes. and there's no scale of... No. But, you know, we're not in a competition no. with each other. We're only in a competition with ourselves if we want to be, if yes. we don't want to be, and just then, hmm. then that's fine. But yes, it, the point <laughs> is that you can... Yes, the idea is, that I think what Louise is saying, is that yes, you can go through at the bench, you can produce a piece. Um, you don't have to pay thousands of pounds to get a piece of paper, do you? You can spend hundreds of pounds on at the bench, you can still get feedback, you can get a, a feedback, positive and also not negative feedback, but you can be, I can be critical. If you say, what do you think of my soldering job? Is this a good piece? What could I do right the next time? You don't pay any extra for that. It is included in with your membership and you can contact me. You have to go up in your user dashboard, right hand side, um, user dashboard, it's on the right hand side. It says uh, project area. Is that tab working now or it is, is it? Yep, yeah, on the right hand side, do project area, make a project, upload photographs to that project so then I can see. Then you can ask for feedback. You have to make sure that you include those photographs to me and I will critique them for you. Say, I've done this job, is it good? You know, ask, ask me, just say, is this nice? And I'll go, well, that's actually lovely. But if you say, look, Andrew, be really <coughs> critical, have a look at this joint, what can I do better? How about this? Is the bezel too high? And I will reply to that. Mm. It's not simply just having a piece of work that you pass off to somebody for examination because no, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that you should pay thousands of pounds for a piece of paper to prove that you can do something. That's what I don't want to do. I think accreditation is good as well, though. Providing it is an accredited mm. and not just... I've got to be very careful what I'm saying. Yeah. But I don't... But I believe that if you are after something to be accredited, it has to be... H uh, um, HND, not HND, uh, City and Guilds. It has to be a university. It cannot be just simply a school that has been set up. It has to be an approved, authoritative organisation that gives you a diploma, not necessarily a school. Sorry, I said too much. Should we wrap it up? Should we have one more? Um, I'm waiting. Oh, no, I'm not waiting for an email. It's OK. I think it's coming later. So, yes, okay. I think so. Good. Stephen says, screw a degree. The proof is in the pendy. What's the pendy? So, screw a degree. Yeah, don't mm. worry about degrees. degrees what's the pendy? Degrees. Yeah, what's, what's the pendy, Steve? What's the pendy? So, <laughs> a degree. I have a degree in three-dimensional design. Has it helped me in what I'm doing? Dependent. Yay! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Proof is in the bendy. Bendy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I believe is that if you go to university to get your degree, that degree, the fact that you've got a degree, does nothing for you to get a job. It is your practical experience that enables you to it, get a job. I think it does help. Uh, personally, I don't believe that. 
It is my experience that I obtained getting a degree that has given me a job. It is not the fact that I can say, I've got a degree in this, because that degree does not tell you anything. It's a, it depends upon how your work is. Yeah, I do think you can learn, you do learn a lot more in the field. Yes. Not the field, but the, you know, <laughs> the, the industry when you're actually working or getting yes. experience in there. And yes. The, yes, absolutely. And the degree will not teach you everything that you need to know to, to, to operate a business or to become independently um, self-supportive. It may help you if you want to go on somewhere else and then you continue learning. But you go to somebody, chap comes to me, says, Andrew Berry, I've got a degree in jewellery design. I'm like, oh, there, good for you. Put that to one side. I'm not interested. Show me what you can do. Show me the pieces you can do. Can you, and I always reply, and I always go back to when um, a gentleman who came to see me, he had a degree in this, that, and the other. He had a HND in this. He had a teacher certificate in this, that, and the other. He came to me and said, Andrew, I want a job. Brilliant, well done. I won't say his name. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I said, brilliant, okay, what can you do? Can you melt gold down? He went, oh, no. Oh, okay, right, okay. Um, can you set some stones? He went, no, I can't set stones. So if I employed him based upon the degrees, HND, City and Girls, blah, 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 it, he was brilliant, but he couldn't do the work because there were the, 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 the degrees did not tell me what he could do. He physically could not work. He could not work in our shop because he could not melt down. He could not set. He didn't know anything. But these are the things that you say you learn... But field. that's not to say you've wasted your time doing a degree. That's not, not to say that it's. But to, but to expect. Well, not ever, I don't think. I don't think to any. get upon a ladder higher up than somebody without a degree, I don't believe. Well, you that. need both, don't you, ideally? Yeah, you yeah. need the experience. And he came to me, worked for me for nothing. Why? And he, he rang me up and said, Andrew, I don't have the experience in this, that, and the other. Can I work for you for nothing and learn? I haven't got a problem with that. And that's what happened. Good. Anyway, should we, sorry, so that was, that was me spouting off, I'm sorry about that. I've so got I apologise, I apologise <laughs> if I've offended anybody, but me personally, I've got a degree, I've got a degree in design. Has that degree enabled me, I go, got my degree, there we go, there's my bit of paper. That isn't going to work, show me what you can do, sorry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Um, uh, Jamie thinks she's going to copy the proof is in the pen. <laughs> proof is in the pen. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, good. Uh, Dylan says, have you had any self-taught people work for you? Yes. Yes. We are employing one now. Just two. two. We are yeah. employing two people, Rebecca and Lee. Yeah. They've had no formal qualifications. They've I think Rebecca has. Out. She's gone and done courses. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Off her own back. Yeah. Totally. But. Yeah. It's, but whether she's got this, that, and the other, whether whether she's got qualifications, yeah, that doesn't mean a thing to me. Mm. I want to see the proof. The proof is in the pendy. It's in the pendy. <laughs> yeah, they, we're all we're all having that one now, Stephen. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Right. I, can I just show Very you quickly. before we go? Yes. Do you remember a little while ago, um, Sarah made a fabulous pig tusk oh, yes. necklace? Well, now we've got a photo which um, she's just sent over. Um, of, I'm just trying to remind myself of the story, it's the um, the lady, the recipient, the person who it was made for, wearing it. Um, so yeah, uh, so it was it was commissioned um, by a gentleman for his mum, and here it is, here, here she is wearing it. Wow. That's an awesome pendant, isn't that it? Is that is one hell of a pendant, isn't it? How yeah. amazing. Let me just scroll down here. Yeah, fabulous. It's very good, isn't it? Uh, I was sent the pic last week. Asara was sent the picture last week. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. <clears throat> that is a statement piece, isn't it? How cool is it? <laughs> she looks very happy with it as well. <laughs> amazing. Awesome. Or a, a boar, not a pig. Apparently she loves it. <laughs> Good. Yeah, she looks very happy with it. She does. Super. I How love fab. it. Should we leave it at that? I think so. All right. Good. Lovely. Nice pendy. Nice pendy to finish <laughs> off. <laughs> Wrong one. There we go. That's better. All right. Should we end it there? Yes. All right, everyone. 
So thank you very much, usual thing, at the end of time. Thank you very much for coming on today and sharing this hour with us. It's always an amazing hour. It always goes by too quick. We have a, a good laugh. Don't forget, if you want to ask me any questions regarding things like imposter syndrome and how I overcome things like my stammer and that sort of thing, please do email louise at andrewberry.co.uk. She'll put all the emails together um, to do some sort of idea of a podcast. Yes. Yeah, I, I think it's nerves. Really like good. nerves. <clears throat> yeah, just, just generally how it went yeah mm. how, how you how you managed it and, and mm. overcame it all exactly mm. so i love that i love that idea so we'll do Good. that shall we yes why not um okay so everyone enjoy the rest of your week really do appreciate it look out from wednesday onwards regarding the catches workshop which is going to be this time next week we did hinges a week ago this week Coming up, we're going to do all things about catches. I'm not going to be doing a box class. It's going to take too long to do within the three hours There is session. a box class video on at the bench, though. There is. So the usual thing, the emails will be going out with films relating to what we've done on at the bench regarding clasps and so forth. And as Louise says, there is a video, series of videos on how to make a box class. So everybody, anything else you want to say to me before I go any further? Ooh, I don't think so, no. Good. You're more than welcome, KS. Thanks for a very informative video. Oh, fab. You're welcome. It's always fun, isn't it, having a nice chat. Mm. You never know what's going to come through, but it is nice. And also, Susan, if you can email Louise regarding Tucson for next year, we're up for that, and just give us some idea of where to book, hotels and things like that. It'd be absolutely fabulous. And yeah, negotiator, I'll take you up on your, 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 your steak. <laughs> you love the steak, don't you? Absolutely. I, yeah. OK, Louise. Andrew. <laughs> so it's goodbye from Louise. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Everyone enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.